So you know, in Florida, where I live, we have speckled trout. There, there's some challenges, some environmental challenges that have made it tough over the past few years to really rely on a solid trout bite. When Clayton said, hey man, you want to go out and film a trout show? My first thought was, man, come on. Like that, you know, that, that wouldn't happen at home. I was super surprised and totally wrong because it was non-stop trout fishing. Now that's a top water bite Woo! there, boys. <laughs> Hey, here's the thing, it's a really exciting day. I just arrived in Port Lavaca, Texas, and when you see one of these, you know something good's about to come out of it. We're here at Maudi Boats. I've always wanted to drive a Maudi, I've always wanted to fish out of a Maudi, and this week we're gonna get the chance. So I'm waiting for Steve C to come out, the owner of Maudi Boats. There's two boats in the parking lot that are finished. I don't know which one we're taking, but I'm excited to have either one. Hey, Steve, thank you. Hey, Jamie, glad to meet you. Listen, I was out here before you were in a meeting and uh, I was peeking around and I, I, I was saying that when you, see a, when you see something like that, you know something good comes out of it and you know you're in a pretty cool place. So thanks for inviting us to Maudi. Um, <laughs> I've been looking at your boats for, from afar for a number of years. Well, you thank know, you. Down here in South Texas, I always wanted to, to fish on one and drive one. And, the fact that you're giving us this opportunity this week to take a boat, brand new boat, out of the mold, you know, that you, you kind of customized for us, and the fact that we're gonna take that to the land cut and then be able to use it in Port O'Connor, I'm, I'm super excited. Well, from captain to captain, you know, we put a lot of trust in those that come in here and take a Mountie out and run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, these boats are highly regarded here on the Texas coast. So, you know, one of the, one of the things with Texas boats, me being from Florida, um, when I think of a flats boat, or a skinny water boat, shall I say, I think of a, 16, 17 foot, you know, two, three people maybe. Um, explain what a Texas boat is. Explain how, how a 26 foot boat can access the same waters at a 16 foot flat spot. Well, it has to do with the hull design, the geometry of the hull. We're a true cat hull, but we, the, the boat, because of the tunnel and the cat, uh, it rides up in the water in real skinny water. So like I said, we can run in six inches of water on plane, don't stop. Right. Um, and we can take that same boat and haul, and we can run it at 40 miles offshore snapper fishing. It's amazing. So it handles yeah. rough water, it handles skinny water. Uh, our boat is one of the most versatile boats here on the Texas coast. And you're in a 26 foot boat with all the amenities of a big center console. All the amenities of a big center yeah. console, but fish is skinny, uh, lots of room to put gear, fishermen. Uh, if you're a guide and you're on a charter, uh, you know, it's typical down here that you're gonna run four people and a guide on a boat. And that boat is large enough to handle that capacity of people. Uh, or if you're a two-man team in a tournament and you wanna get back in some really great redfish water, right. we can run that boat skinny and get there and get out. Awesome. All right, it's like, it's like Christmas morning. I see these two beautiful boats here and I'm thinking, which, which one? Well, this, this boat is a, a customer's new boat that we just finished rigging. Uh, the customer will pick that up on uh, Friday. So that's it. So this that's boat, <laughs> right. uh, we, we just built that as a dealer or demo boat. Yep. Uh, both that we were gonna, we are gonna use to uh, take potential uh, boat, boat buyers out on their first test run. And we actually built this boat with enough uh, accessories on it to be uh, appealing to almost any buyer. I don't even know what to do with this, this much boat, space. This boat, 25 foot non Maudi, C25, which is our flagship boat. We matched it with a Suzuki 300, uh, Minn Kota uh, Raptor uh, shallow water anchors, Minn Kota trolling motor. Beautiful. Angle coolers, we put the custom hatches on the boat, uh, custom kick tail console cover, and our 25 by 36 insulated box with seat. That can be used either for a li as a live well, dry box, or cooler box. That's a beautiful and boat. This is our 30, uh, 35 gallon uh, recirculating live well for live bait or to keep your, your catch alive. Man, I'm excited. Like I said to you before, I don't even <clears throat> I don't even know what to do with all this room. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm used to operating in, in, you know, I could probably put the boats that we've used in the past inside this. So it's going to be a super exciting day. We have a two hour ride from Corpus down to the land cut. Excellent. We're going to be more than comfortable and be able to put all our supplies in here. So uh, I love fishing the land cut. Yeah. But one thing I'll tell you about this boat, feel the boat. The boat will run in any kind of water conditions, but you control the boat. Uh, it's a very safe, uh, very seaworthy boat that'll get you in places that'll surprise you how big it is. Well, I look forward to reporting back to you in a couple days. Look forward Thanks, to man. it. Thanks, Jamie. Growing up, I used to uh, read about these remote dropping camps in Canada or see a show where a group of guys are going to Alaska and they're staying in this cabin and it's, and it's rugged and rough, but the fishing is just out of this world. Um, this was that show for me. I was able to, uh, I got invited to come down to the Land Cut, Texas. I didn't really know a lot about it. I've heard, I've heard about it. I didn't know how remote the Land Cut was, but it was the closest thing I've experienced to a drop camp within the continental United States. And right away when we arrived, I knew this was gonna be a special trip. Clayton, we got our new Maui boat day one here in Land Cut. It's pretty cool staying at your place last night. You know, now we're kind of getting to see what uh, what everyone's been talking about. What's on tap for today? We're gonna head south, fish the intercoastal for some trout, redfish, do a little trolling, maybe throw some topwaters. See what happens. Well, it looks like a beautiful day. We have a couple storms around us, but I think we're gonna get lucky. They look like they're pushing off the Gulf right now. Um, it's pretty morning, a lot of lightning, but it's slick. We got here yesterday, it was, wasn't was slick. It was that South Texas kind of wind that I'm, I'm used to all the time. It was blowing pretty hard, but it looks like we got a beautiful morning. Oh yeah, for sure. Never right. shortage of wind. Yeah, no shortage of wind. So we'll take, we'll take this, uh, opportunity with this slick water to throw some top water this morning see if we could uh, get some rapples on some trout and redfish and then uh, we'll see what the rest of the day brings. You know we were packing for this trip um, talking to Clayton you know he Clayton fishes a lot of soft plastics uh, jig heads weedless <clears throat> that's his kind of that's how he targets these fish. I never go anywhere without my rapple of top waters and that first morning we woke up I mean, it was textbook. There was no wind, slick, calm water. Couldn't You didn't hear a boat. All you had was just extreme nature around you. Nothing could set itself up better for a top water morning than this day. You know, you get these times of day where it's just like perfect, it's slick. Sun's coming up behind you and you just hear that little trout pop, pop. So it's not the, it's not the uh, South Texas giant we're looking for, but a fun way to start but you know a lot of times with these skitter walks it's it's the cadence it's that rattle 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 and if you stop and keep going again you usually get that strike as soon as you start picking that that cadence back up it's that quick pause oh! 
<laughs> Just like that. Oh, textbook. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Fish on. That's a good there one. There you go. Your trout? Yeah, good one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> he wasn't yeah, ready to come ready. <laughs> That's a nice trout. Oh, yeah. All Woo. right. Hey, there we go, buddy. That was That's what we're looking for right there. More than one. Look at that. Oh, son. Beautiful fish, man. Look at that. Hey, that's why you wake up at 5 a.m., right? And uh, do everything you do. Yeah, you really want to handle them minimally. They have a slime that protects them. So get them in, get a picture, get a measurement if you want. And release them to fight another day. We'll make some more. All right, buddy, good job. Let's get another one, huh? Oh, yeah. Hey guys, I'm Clayton Laskowski from Floresville, Texas, and this is uh, Land Cut, and we've, I've, been, I've grew up fishing here since I was knee high to a grasshopper, and I wanted to take these guys down here to show them what it's all about, and how good the fishing is. So the Land Cut is an isolated location, isolated from city life, meaning that you need to be prepared to, have, to come down here, have all your stuff ready to go, generator, lights, you know, ice, ice chest, bait, tackle. There's no, you can't go to the gas station across the street or grocery store across the street. There's no, you bring it or you don't have it. The, the land cut is basically what, what its name is. It's a narrow cut through the land that attaches two bodies of water for navigation purposes. But what it does is set itself up for amazing fishing. You literally have this straight cut, shallow water, grass line, deep water, and it goes from 15 feet to, you know, zero feet very quickly. I don't think I've ever seen a place where you can set your Minn Kota trawl motor to go straight and you have 20 miles of fishable water. There's no area on that, on that, in that ditch that you can't catch a fish. The other thing is, when so next time someone tells you, hey, go fish that ditch, you may think they're joking, go fish the ditch. Every day is different. <clears throat> Just because it worked yesterday doesn't mean it'll work today or will work 10 minutes from now. So, you know, just. We had a really good topwater bite. Uh, the visibility hasn't changed. Sun's been behind clouds. It's just starting to get a little bit brighter. And uh, yeah, you just got no one to change. So we were both throwing topwater. Clayton switched over to the uh, Rapala Crush swim baits. And as their name states, he has been crushing them on the back of the boat. So, you know, I'm a topwater guy. I love doing it. But, you know, sometimes you just got to Got to face the sad truth and the top water bites over. So I'm following the Clayton train right now and I'm, I'm on the jig bite. I may slip back into a top water a little bit later just cause I'm stubborn like that, but. Oh. 
Made Good the right fish. choice. Go back to the top water. Couldn't see anything with the jig. Good fish? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit better. Oh yeah, get the net. Get the net. Oh, good fish. Get the net. Woo! Top water again. Here she comes. And she hit the fire on that one. Good fish. Look at that, huh? Woo. Stay on, baby. Now that's a top water bite Woo. there, boys. <laughs> Just when I said it was too getting too late for top water, you know, we couldn't see on the jig bite. And this old girl came, came on. Beautiful fish, as Clayton said before, you know, you want to try not to handle them too much, keep them in the water if you can. And we'll get that, we'll get that bait out of her mouth. I was really focused after that first morning, I was really kind of on a top water thing. You know, I just couldn't get that out of my brain. But we were fortunate enough to be able to bring down a few new lures with us. Um, one is, a, is an eel bait that we're working with another company to kind of help develop and, and take through the steps. And then the, the other one was, which worked fantastically was Rapala's Crush City, a brand new freshwater bait that we were able to get a couple packs of. Now, these baits were specifically designed with bass in mind, but when I saw them this year at ICAST, I knew that it would just crush the redfish and trout. So they were kind enough to send us some baits, and these were the first time they were tried in salt water. Yeah. Hey. All right. Oh, you loose the redfish. With the, uh, the old Crush City. fish out here in deeper water. Oh God, that was as quick as it could be. <laughs> That's a big one. That was as quick as it could be. I think it didn't even hit the water before you got that fish. That's cool. Come on up. I gotta get out of this I pool. relinquished the bow. Nice redfish. Crush city, huh? Crush city. Crushed it. <laughs> Man, that, I mean, as soon as that thing hit the water, he, Beautiful. Red color. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I think the name says it, Crush City. That's right. He did what just he that. Did. Pretty fish. Oh, that was close. Redfish? I don't know. That was a big trout. Oh. Hold on. Coming to the rescue. Well, that was a good one, man. Look at that. Oh, man, good one. Hey, on that new top secret Rapala Crust City bait. Look at that. I mean, slammed it. That boy ate it, didn't he? Good job, man. Pretty fish. You know, the special places that you go to, um, they take preparation and they take planning. And that's for a reason because they're they're if this if you were able to get drive down the interstate and get to the land cut it wouldn't be the land cut so the whole experience the anticipation um the arrival and the exit you know they exceeded anything i could have thought and uh it'll go in you know it'll go in the memory bank as one of the most memorable fishing trips i've had <laughs> <laughs>